So this operation was happening pretty much under everyone's noses, right in the middle of a residential area. And it was also supplying other illegal smoke shops in the city. NYPD officers... Huh, so places like this convenience store, which is now shut down, aren't exactly selling candy. Now, some are selling millions of dollars of items that are as illegal as they are dangerous. And even though the mayor and most New Yorkers want stores like this gone, the demand for their products is so high that once one gets closed, two or three others pop up in its place. It was the community that tipped off police to this multi-million dollar operation. City sheriffs and the NYPD went in and found a back room. Among the items seized were a printing press, fake labels, edibles, chemicals. Weed gummies, vape pens, marijuana flowers, and none of it is legal. It's one of the largest cannabis busts New York City Sheriff's deputies have ever seen. We got more product in here. Backpack boys. The child ever found this, they wouldn't think twice about eating it. These inspections have become much more common since May, after Mayor Adams lobbied the state to raise the fines and give the sheriff authority to padlock an unlicensed cannabis shop on the spot. It looks like candy. It looks like things that my kids play with. It makes me very, very angry. And I'm very curious about what's going to happen and how they're going to shut this down to protect the children. This door slides in the back room. And we climbed through. You can see that somebody might be residing in that location. And then we found this. You can tell this isn't just like a random store. The way that they're set up, they're selling volume. New York has declared all-out war on the hundreds of illegal convenience stores now operating in this city. But what nobody's talking about is that these drug-dealing delis, they're the logical progression of crime in a city that doesn't punish anybody for anything. And these are just a new form of the out-of-control crime rising up in every aspect of our life here in New York. We see it at our stores with our shoplifting epidemic. We see it on our streets with our gun crime epidemic. And now when you go to buy an ice cream at the corner store, you may also have the opportunity to buy something that's much, much worse for you. And and could even wind you up in the hospital. Because although there are certain substances you can sell in this city with all of the proper paperwork, only a very small number of places have it. And there are other places like this little place right here that when it's open, they could be selling just about anything. And these places aren't just selling grass. Some of them are full-blown street pharmacies literally hiding in plain sight near schools, apartments. It's a disaster. Plus, these are a black hole of doom for the neighborhoods they're in. As once one store turns criminal, it's gonna make so much money that the other stores nearby will be tempted to follow along, which sadly just brings more crime into these neighborhoods. And delis, they already sell stuff that's not good for you. Candy, snacks, chips, but drugs. Those are the perfect product for a place that wants to hook you so you become a repeat customer. That's their business model after all, and once one store starts, the others have to follow along or they're gonna go out of business. But that brings us to the real reason why there's now a massive crackdown targeting these illegal businesses. Regular New Yorkers, they don't want them in their neighborhoods. Absolutely not. And what they enable is a sea of substances to flow into our streets, attracting not only criminals, but also possibly getting into the hands of young people, hurting neighborhoods in ways nobody anticipated. But as you're about to see, as the police shut them down, they just come back. Not only because they're making millions of dollars breaking the law, but also because they're making the products they sell inside the stores themselves. So here we have your typical busy street corner in Manhattan. We've got delis all over the place, convenience stores as some people call them. And some of these convenience stores, they look very legitimate. Some of them don't look very legitimate. I was just inside this one. They're not doing anything wrong in here. But until the police raid some of these places, there's no real way to know if the sign out front is just marketing or an actual indication of what's being sold inside. Bodegas are the cornerstones of many New York City communities, but this one was selling a whole lot more than food, coffee, and over-the-counter items. Authorities allege Family Deli dished out illegal edibles, pre-rolls, magic mushrooms, and colorful... So on the outside, this place, which had over a million dollars of illegal substances inside of it, looked like your average convenience store selling sandwiches, selling candy, selling chips. It even marketed itself as being family-oriented. Yet the real products they were selling destroy families. But the first question this raises is how on earth is this being allowed to happen? How did we get to a point where physical stores now sell illegal products? You shouldn't 
wouldn't be able to set up a physical business on the side of the street that sells things that are dangerous to random people who walk in the door. But that's exactly what was happening. That's what is happening at any of these businesses, even maybe this little place right here. But the problem is these places, they bring crime and other consequences with them into the neighborhood. And how couldn't they? To run an illegal business, you have to become a criminal. And that means you start dealing with criminals. And a lot of the people buying your products, they may very well be criminals themselves. But maybe you're wondering why this place was marketing itself as a burger joint slash convenience store instead of something else. Well, that's because businesses that make it a little too obvious are now getting padlocked and shut down by the sheriff's department. Was it ever in doubt that this place was selling stuff that they shouldn't have been selling? Probably not. And the logical explanation for why places like this exist all over town on the side of the street is simple. There just aren't enough people headed to prison for doing this. And once you see what's going on inside some of these places, you'll wish more people were. Members of the New York City Sheriff's Office went in to do an inspection, walked out with $1 million worth of illegal drugs. They found this door. The massive stash was hidden in a back storage room along with a tent, a light, and heaters used to grow cannabis flower on... Interesting. So the local community ratted this place out. Good for them. But when police arrived, they found something out of a Hollywood movie. Secret rooms instruments inside the facility to grow things and then enhance their potency in ways that could really hurt somebody. It was terrible. And the supposed convenience store had boxes of stuff from across the world. Here's another one that's been shut down by the city, also on the side of the street. But the criminals that run these places are already on record saying that these shutdowns and seizures don't even matter to them, which has a lot to do with why these places keep coming back as soon as they get closed and why they are now masquerading as legitimate businesses. This one store owner who was in interviewed says that they are making so much money that even if the police take everything, they can earn it back in just a short period of time and that they would even sell on a plastic folding table on the side of the street if their business got closed. And you know what that means? That means that person has no fear of going to jail. And a lot of times the penalties for this are just monetary, but these places are making plenty of that. But the interesting thing is that nobody in the neighborhoods where these are located seem to want them to exist because the unlawful activity taking place at places like this is destroying communities all across the city. And that's because our current system of enforcement on these little places is what allows them to keep existing and it's why the city itself is having such a hard time stopping them from showing up everywhere. Because they're allowed to open up, they're allowed to run their business, they're allowed to have the lights on and a lease and signage and the only way that bad guys are going to get caught is when the neighbors call it in and complain and enough complaints are generated that it brings a law enforcement response. That's a terrible system. But that's not the only reason it's not working. The Bronx raid comes on the heels of another bust in Brooklyn earlier this month. Authorities not only weeded out one of the city's largest unlicensed pot distributors, but confiscated a printing press used to manufacture illegal labels there. So the real issue here is that most of the time, the police are only shutting down the actual storefronts that sell these illegal products. Yes, some of these places make the illegal products inside, but most of it is coming from another location, another distributor, if you will, and that place is generally hidden, and the police have trouble finding them. And although we just had a $10 million drug bust inside of a nightclub that was near a few of these illegal convenience stores, this is the exception, not the norm. And even after these quote-unquote gift shops get shut down, if they are doing something that they shouldn't be, the reason they can come back so quickly is because all the infrastructure for them to exist is still out there. And this hurts and damages communities in more ways than anybody realizes. Because now that you've got illegal operations operating in small little storefronts like this legitimate convenience store right here, the amount of money that a landlord can get for renting out a shop like that has just gone up. So now there's a financial incentive for that landlord to only work with criminals. And that's going to take little stores like this that have existed for decades and force them out, force them to shut down because the landlords can rent their stores to people who want to sell something other than products that help you clean yourself up. And don't get confused. These new businesses that are coming along competing with places like this, they're not just selling stuff for you that's bad for you. It's so dangerous. It could wind someone up in the hospital. And they're getting this garbage from the most unlikely of places. So here we are in a part of town, like many, that has a bunch of storefronts that nobody's using. They look abandoned. They look like they might be renovated. Either way, there's tape over all the windows. You can't see inside. And one of these was being used as a stash house for a whole bunch of these illegal convenience stores. It's one of the largest cannabis busts New York City Sheriff's deputies have ever seen. This warehouse full of weed gummies, vape pens, marijuana flowers, and none of it is legal. Any idea where the product is coming from? 
So the bust here happened about a month ago at a building that people thought was just a storefront nobody wanted anything to do with, but really it was something very different. The building was all taped off with fading paperwork, kind of like what you see right here. And tenants figured the landlord was just trying to get his act together so that one day it could be rented out to somebody else. But what it actually was was a warehouse full of illegal products supplying the stores that either open specifically to sell illegal products or to the bodegas that get tempted to get involved in this kind of thing and then start selling something that's bad along with a hamburger. But you know why the place got busted? Someone tried to break in, proving that these places are a magnet for criminal activity no matter what they are or where they are. Whoever was responsible for the break-in probably figured whoever was running the warehouse wasn't dumb enough to contact the police. But it could have been the landlord, could have been somebody else in the neighborhood. Remember, neighbors hate these places, they're watching them. And that's really been the city's biggest defense from their existence in the first place. Because what they're selling is so dangerous, it could cripple a person. We know some of it comes in from overseas that is is completely illegal product we don't even know what is in it in fact we saw this box labeled made in china the packaging is bright and colorful it looks like candy it looks like um i'm slime it looks like yeah things that my kids play with it makes me very so it's not just that these places don't have licenses to sell something that naturally grows in the earth and then is tinkered with relentlessly by human beings to be as powerful as possible and as bad for you as possible they're also mixing in all kinds of weird chemicals and substances that nobody has any idea what they are and that is something people are putting into their bodies. Which means it's a good thing that these places are getting closed fast. But what's also pretty insane is that these places have their own printing presses inside to make packaging. A lot of it brightly colored with exciting themes that looks like it's targeted towards people who might not be in their late 60s. Which allows these places to create products that are sold all across the city, which look legitimate. They've got a high quality design, they've got high quality packaging, they look like the real deal. But they're actually more dangerous than anyone can imagine. But sadly, like most of the crime that we've got flooding through our streets all over the city. It exists because our laws don't think it's a big deal and don't seek to punish it so much as that they seek to actually protect it, which means that the communities and the people who are being most hurt by this and the ones who are going out of their way to report this to police are fighting a battle they cannot win. So far, they're reporting at least 75 stores have been closed. Nearly $6 million in penalties have been handed down and 3,800 violations all issued. New York City Sheriff Anthony Miranda confirming authorities have close to 3,000 locations to investigate. Violations, penalties, seizures. Okay, property gets confiscated. People have to pay fines, but nobody's headed to jail. How do the police and the authorities here think they're going to beat a system that's making more money than the fines that are being levied against them. That's impossible. And although hundreds of these places are getting raided and closed down, we aren't hearing about hundreds of people filling up our prisons, which means anyone running an illegal storefront is still out there on the street plotting their next move. Which could be as simple as waiting a few weeks after your store gets shut down and then moving to another vacant storefront nearby. The other issue that the authorities have is that tracking down the actual owners of these operations can be quite difficult. Because when you shut down a place and you catch people inside running it, they can say that they just just work there and they'll probably get hit with low level penalties. The actual owners of these places probably take great steps to conceal their identities, especially if they're renting a business with the intent to pay in cash, with the intent to rent it under the name of a corporation or even a false name. The landlord might not have any idea who they're renting to and they might not care as long as they're getting piles of money every month. And the other problem is the people running these illegal convenience stores might not even be in New York to begin with. More than 57 million dollars of illegal cannabis was seized in New York last year, mostly coming from states that legalized, but have seen their growing outpace heavily consumer demand. California, Michigan. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. You've got other states that are creating the things that are being sold here illegally, and they make so much of it out of state that they've run out of customers. But there are obviously lots of customers here in New York, and what do they do? They import that stuff here, they bring it to warehouses, they bring it to the basements of bodegas where they repackage it and sell it as who knows what, mixed with who knows what else. And to anyone living in a community that is negatively affected by the presence of stores like this that sell things that might get into the hands of kids, one of the big revelations is that this is what happens when you decriminalize something that might not be good for people. And the fact that there's no penalty on the customer who buys an illegal product because that's been decriminalized criminalized is part of the problem. The customers that are coming to these places and supporting them, nothing happens to them either. Now, legislatively, the decriminalization of certain substances in this city has already happened. That cat 
is out of the bag. It's not going back in. But the city has a new plan to help try and fight these stores from popping up, and that is finding the landlords. Like, look, you got all these vacant storefronts right here. Landlords can't rent them out. Some guy comes along with a fancy fur coat and says, hey, man, I'll give you thousands of dollars a month to just let me run my convenience store here. Well, if that convenience store turns out to be one of these illegal places and they're selling chicken wings and other stuff along with them, the city will actually now be able to fine the landlord up to $50,000 per instance if they've called for one of these places to get shut down and the landlord has not gone through with an eviction proceeding against that business. But the problem there is it costs the landlord money and maybe they don't necessarily know that a criminal wants to be their tenant. I'll admit that's definitely a stretch. If you rent to somebody who turns out to be a criminal, you probably didn't do your due diligence on them. But the reason this is such a massive problem with these illegal shops popping up all over the place is because New York has decided that it's gonna take this type of crime and punish it the same way it does everything else, by not punishing it. And what that unfortunately means is that when Boar's Head is no longer paying the bills and the rent, it might be time to sell something else. Especially if the people operating one of these little convenience stores only have a few months left on their lease anyways. What have they got to lose? The worst thing that happens to them is they spend money on a new sign that claims that now they're a smoke shop, which isn't exactly selling tobacco products. They operate for a few months, they make as much money as they can, and then they vanish. Or worst case, the authorities roll in, shut them down, and hit them with a fine that just comes out of their profits. Which reveals the real reason that we've got such a problem with these. We've got laws in this city that don't stamp out crime. Instead, they reward it by creating low-risk, high-reward opportunities for people who 20 years ago would have been in the back of a police car, but now they're living out in the Hamptons. Maybe. Is that what's happening? Are the laws we have here in this city the reason we have this problem? Will the city ever fix it, or are they just going to be shutting down one store while two others open up? Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.